Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain everything you need to know about wing equipment. From wing sups, wing foils, hydrofoils, board size, wing size, mast length, you name it, I'm going to share all the knowledge with you that I picked up over the last few years. Now this is the first of many tutorial videos, so hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any other videos. Now let's get into it. Wings have been around for a long time in some shape or form. In the last few years they have exploded in popularity. One of the big reasons for this is the advancements in hydrofoils. The new foils and wings have got way more efficient. It is really important to be on the correct equipment. It will make a huge difference to how quickly you'll progress. Winging is already hard enough, so you don't want to make it any harder than it needs to be. If you have no wind experience, then I would recommend starting out with a wing sup. It is imperative that your sup has a centreboard, as without a centreboard you are not able to track across the wind and you will just drift off downwind. It's such a great way to learn how to harness the power of the wind. If you already have wind experience from kite surfing, sailing or windsurfing, then you could skip supping and go straight for wing foiling. There are four main components that you need to consider. The wing, mast, foil and board. Firstly, let's take a look at wings. Sizes range from 2 meters up to 8 meters, and I would recommend getting a 4 or 5 meter wing to start with depending on your weight. One top tip for learning to wing foil is to have plenty of power, as it makes it so much easier to get up on the foil when you don't have to pump the wing. It's not like kiting when being overpowered is dangerous and hinders your progression. Now let's look at foils. The easiest metric to get your head around is surface area. Larger surface area foils have more lift and foil at slower speeds. Smaller surface area foils have less lift and need to be going faster to foil. Small foils have less drag which enables them to go faster, but the smaller the foil, the less stable it will be. Wing foils range from 700 to 2500 surface area. Complete beginners will progress fastest using a big foil around 2000 surface area as it will start foiling at slower speeds with less power. I learned on a 2400, then jumped down to a 1500 and now I mostly use a 1100 depending on the wind. Aspect ratio is another variable worth learning about. In short, high aspect foils are long and thin and have more lift, higher top speeds but they're less manoeuvrable. Low aspect foils are wider and shorter and generally easier to turn. The trend is moving towards higher aspect foils with thinner profiles as they are more efficient and have bigger speed ranges. I could talk for hours about foils but in this first episode I just wanted to highlight the most important factors to consider. Mast length is personal preference. I think a 70cm mast is a great size to learn on. I started with a 71 and then progressed onto a 92cm. Short masts are easier to control and foil and the crashes aren't as bad as with a longer mast. Longer masts give you more range to go fast and fly over waves but feel less direct when turning. Between 80 to 90 centimetres is ideal if you have cracked foiling. Boards are measured by litres and range from 20 to around 150. A guide for a complete beginner is to take your weight in kilograms and add around 30 or 40. This will give you plenty of flotation and make it so much easier to get on the foil. Once you're proficient at foiling, you can switch down to a smaller board, but resist the temptation to size down too soon or go too small, as winging is not fun when you can't get on the foil. My board progression went from 120 to 80, and now I am in love with my 50. I have a 30 litre, but it needs to be nuking for me to use it. I'd rather have a slightly bigger board and a smaller foil. Small boards have less swing weight, so it's nicer to ride, but you don't want to go too small and spend the whole session swimming watching your mates catch all the waves on bigger boards. I can't stress enough that using a big board and a big foil will massively speed up your progression during the first few hours of learning to wing foil. I understand it's tempting to buy an intermediate setup so you don't have to change equipment, but this will make it so much harder to learn. Foiling in any capacity is not easy. You have to be patient and determined. It might look effortless when you see someone flying along, but you have to put in the time to get there, but it is worth all the blood, sweat and tears as you just can't beat that feeling of flying. Thanks for watching the first episode in my How to Wing tutorial series. Please hit the like button, drop me a comment and subscribe. 
it all really helps and is much appreciated. In episode two, I'm going to talk about conditions, safety, and how to set your foil up. Cheers.